Good morning, everyone. This is Tatiana Thompson and episode 17 of Brown Bird News. You know that feed that I left in my pine tree is really popular with birds. I haven't seen crossbills yet, but other birds really like that spot. So I'm just going to leave it there for the time being and keep an eye on it. Whenever we get mild temperatures in the winter, I go house cleaning. It's a chore and it's actually not that much fun in the winter, but it's always a good idea to keep your bird feeders and your bird feeding area clean. Uh, make sure you avoid any skin contact with bird poop. So you see, I wear gloves when I clean my feeders. So let me have a look what I have here. So you see there, there are bird droppings on this feeder. And before I disassemble it, I like to give my feeders a quick wipe. I have these biodegradable wipes here. So just to, just to get rid of that poo on them. Uh, I also use biodegradable garbage bags where I can just throw everything. So once this is done, I dump all the contents of the feeder, even if there's still some stuff left, it's not really safe for the birds. So again, everything goes in this. Ah, there we go. And now this bird feeder is ready to go inside. Broom feeders are 100% dishwasher safe, but I also like to give my bird feeders a nice long hot bath. I let them soak there for a couple of hours. So that's ready to go. Once the feeders are taken care of, I go sweeping. I actually bought a special brush just to do this outside. In the summer it's a lot easier because you can just grab a rake and rake it up and throw it away. In the winter with the frozen stuff and everything under the feet it's a lot more difficult. So here we go. I just sweep up everything on the ground to get rid of all the poop there to make sure that the birds who like to eat on the ground don't get anything bad in their diet. There you go. And again. Just dump it into my garbage. So here we go. All the cleaning is done. And that feels so much better. Have fun cleaning. You know, the highlights of my week are your pictures because they are just stunning. Again, this week we had to narrow them down to five. And so this week we're sending this feeder Squirrel Solution 200 to Ohio to Tom Beasley for his wonderful picture of two herons. Thank you, Tom. Please send us more pictures to photos at brownbirdcare.com. Include a picture of yourself and your mailing address and have a great week. I'll see you next week. Hi David, this week I have a rather interesting question from Bruce Holmes uh, who travels a lot and he actually sends me pictures of all the beautiful places he goes to and the beautiful birds he sees and we share them on Facebook with everyone as well. So here's the question, how about feeding birds from moored boats and marinas? It would have to be for attracting small birds as the seagulls are generally a nuisance. I'm curious about how to attract the smaller birds to a feeder at a water location. Hi Bruce, I'm both a boat owner and a bird watcher and this is the first time in 30 years I've ever had anyone ask me this question. You probably won't like my answer either. First, whether you are able to attract any songbird species to your feeder would depend on where your boat is moored relative to the shoreline and any kind of green habitat. In other words, if there's some hedges or bushes really close to your boat, you might attract the odd songbird. However, I keep my Boston Whaler in two different marinas over the year, and I don't see any way I could put up a feeder and attract any birds of value to me. The worst case scenario, depending on what you offer and how you do it, would be that you also draw in some local pigeons and possibly ducks, such as mallards, to the marina. 
and that, my friend, would not make you very popular with your fellow boaters. Thank you, David. That was actually very interesting. I learned something new today. Uh, if you have questions for David, write to him at askdrbird at brombirdcare.com. What I've noticed is that in North America, we tend to study chickadees a lot, and it looks like Australians love their zebra finches. Well, it's not really surprising for either of the species. They are very hardy and adapt really fast. So let's have a look at what Australian scientists have discovered this week. Birds normally lay one egg a day during breeding season, and then parents control temperatures in the nest to make sure that all the eggs hatch at the same time. This way, each chick will know that it has to share food with its siblings. Well, apparently the rise in temperature, that awful climate change, is taking that control from bird parents and this might mean that eggs will be incubating at different times, causing rivalry and starvation in the nest. So now scientists are trying to figure out whether the birds will adapt to these warmer temperatures, and if they do, how they would do it. A bird being accused of spying? That sounds a bit funny. It is, however, a very serious matter in Israel and Lebanon. A tagged griffon vulture decided to go for a fly and without noticing it crossed the border into Lebanon. It looked very suspicious with all its tags and a monitoring device, so villagers caught it and reported it to the local government. UN peacekeepers had to intervene to get the bird released and brought back to its sanctuary in Israel. Well, it was a very stressful experience for the bird, but it is doing all right now. Ah, uh, New Zealand. Seems so far away, but actually not that far with all the technology we have these days. Have a look at a live webcam that the Department of Conservation has set up on Otagon Peninsula, New Zealand. Here, for the first time ever, you can see the rare northern royal albatross looking after its first hatchling of the year. Northern royal albatrosses have been breeding in this particular spot since 1938, and such spectacular scenery. I hear San Diego is a gorgeous place. And it's also home to the San Diego Bird Festival, which will take place between March 3rd and 6th, 2016. It's their 20th anniversary this year, so lots of interesting things to do there. Boat trips, walking tours, cycling and birding, kayaking and birding, photography workshops, family-friendly activities, and so much more. You know, I really enjoyed reading their brochure. It's all online and it's very interactive. Please do check it out. Jeffrey Gordon, the president of the American Birding Association, is the festival's keynote speaker. He is really pleasant to listen to. Last year, 231 species of birds were seen during the festival. Yes. Uh, one last thing I would like to remind you of is the Great Backyard Bird Count, which starts on February 12th. It will go for four days and will finish on February 15th. I'm all set up to go bird counting this weekend. Have fun and let me know how it goes. Well, goodbye for now. Have a fantastic week. I'll see you next Tuesday.